Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and let's talk about sunscreens. How to choose a good one, how to avoid a bad one, and do they even work? What's the science? We know that in 2012, over 2 million people in America were diagnosed with non-melanoma skin cancer. That's a lot, more than ever before. We also know, and pretty much every organization agrees, that sunscreens are protective and important if you're going to be exposed to the sun for long periods of time. If you can cover up or not be exposed to the sun, that's always going to be your better choice. Studies also show that some people who are exposed a lot and have a lot of you know, time in the sun increase their vitamin D levels naturally and they have natural protection. However, most of us don't get a lot of exposure. We're in offices, uh, we have winters to deal with, and we go in and we get a lot of sun all at once and it can damage the skin and predispose us to UV ray damage to the skin, which puts us at risk. So we now know that it's very important for us to protect against the, the damaging rays of the sun. Five to 10 minutes of direct sunlight in the summertime gives you the vitamin D that you need. In the winter, the sun is too low in the sky to give us UVB radiation, so you probably do need some sort of supplement to support your vitamin D levels in that regard. Now, how to choose a good sunscreen? Well, the old-fashioned zinc oxide, which is the white stuff that was on the lifeguard's nose, which doesn't blend in that well, is still the all-time favorite and the safest of all. There's another chemical ingredient called avobenzone, which is also safe. And those are the two ingredients you want to look for in a good sunscreen. Uh, if you're not too concerned about the white, you can buy a tube of zinc oxide for $1.50 in your grocery store in the diaper rash section, mix it with your favorite lotion, and you have a sunscreen. You can get very, very fancy and get zinc oxides mixed with other natural chemicals and agents that are still okay. The ones that you want to avoid are the oxobenzone. That's the one you want to avoid. Uh, the retinal pomatate you want to avoid. You want to avoid sunscreens with high SPF factors because the FPS factor is only a measure of how well it blocks the UVB rays. Well, the UVB rays are the ones that actually make vitamin D, and that SPF factor for 70 or 100 tells you nothing about how well it blocks the UVA, which is actually the, the skin, cause, skin cancer causing ray. So you want to avoid those, and those are actually anything over 50, I think, is even being outlawed in Europe and soon to be hopefully outlawed here in the States. We don't need it that high. Makes you think you never have to reapply it, and that's actually not true. Uh, com combination of sunscreens with, with bug killers, uh, again, um, they are not good. It actually just increases the rate of absorption of both the sunscreen and the, the bug killer, which we don't really want. And the worst of all are the sprays and the towelettes and the sunscreen powders because they are inhaled and those are none of those sunscreens are approved to be actually inhaled in the system and hopefully those sprays are going to be outlawed very very soon so those are things to to look for the cool thing is in the future we have lots of really neat botanical sunscreens coming on the market there's a cousin of the poinsettia called euphoria um, that actually um, has been shown and actually proved by the FDA for actinic keratinosis, which is a, uh, a early stage of skin cancer. And it's an extract of that plant. Tea, coffee, beta carotene, curcumin, St. John's wort, many, many plants are now actually being studied with lots of research. So hopefully we'll see in the future some botanicals that will actually be the next generation of sunscreens that will act a little bit more intelligently in a sort of a global way for, for sun protection than just trying to block one ray. Uh, again, in, in an Ayurvedic logical you know, process, you think it can't be just blocking one thing. We've tried that and it hasn't really worked. There must be something else. And herbs seem to do so many things. Their constituents are so vast. And many of the herbs that we think that we know so much about, we know very little about. Coffee, for example, has over 300 constituents in it. We don't know much about 90% of them but we still, we still see the benefits. So I believe that the more we can use botanicals to protect our skin in this way, of course, using you know, intelligent exposure, well, it will ultimately make the most sense. We're clearly not there yet, but uh, hopefully that'll be the next generation. We'll see them coming soon. But at least for now, you have some strategies to pick a good, healthy sunscreen and definitely what to avoid. And please, the science is pretty conclusive that at the very, at the very least, 
your sunscreens are going to protect you from squamous cell cancer norma and skin damage, which makes you age in a rapid fashion. And you know, that also is another important reason why to avoid the sun and to use healthy sunscreens. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Viard. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.